Can the fire light it up at Church Street Park? Or will the Morrisville Cardinals zero in on victory? Will the Cavaliers find their way back up the table? The field are still searching for it. Can Locks keep up his red hot form in Texas? Very oh, that's a bold, and that's a bold. See the answers to these questions and more on this week's edition of Emerging Crickets Minor League Cricket Show. Bold him, bold him. Beautiful bowling by Jagreed. The plan has worked. The Morrisville Cardinals hosted Atlanta's two teams on Saturday and Sunday. Saturday night's matchup might have drawn a large crowd in support of the home team, but Atlanta Fire's Corne Drive was there to break up the party. This is some of the best facilities in the find in the world. Um, the lights are awesome. The pitch was great um, for me, obviously. Um, and the outfield is just a carpet. It's brilliant. Four wickets and three overs for 10 runs helped the visitors thrash the Cardinals batting as Atlanta Fire took sole possession of first place in the South. And when we go out there we try to play the situation and bowl the best bowler for that situation. So it's not always um, a set plan. It's constantly changing. Um, pitch conditions has a lot. The batter, um, left or right hander, the way he's playing. So it all, it all changes. It's, n- it's not one set plan. The Cardinals redeemed themselves on Sunday holding the Parma Veers to 127 and chasing it down with nine balls to spare, thanks to Canal Cycles blistering 56 from 37. Well played straight back down the ground, and that one's going to be four as it beats the fielder at mid-on. Next weekend, the Cardinals host two games against the winless Florida Beamers, who had both games abandoned with Orlando Galaxy. Orlando and Fort Lauderdale will each face Atlanta Fire and Atlanta Parma Veers at Broward County Stadium. Wins on Saturday over the Empire State Titans and the New England Eagles boosted the New Jersey Stallions to 4-0 and set up a clash between the first place Stallions and the 2-0 Manhattan Yorkers. Three big wickets from USA Pacer Jesse Singh helped limit the Yorkers to 113 for 8, but it wasn't enough to stop the Yorkers' comeback as Manaj Acharya continued his brilliant form with five wickets. In just nine overs across three games, Manaj shares the wicket lead in the East with DC's Sarab Jatlata and New Jersey's Stephen Wig with 10. The Stallions will seek revenge in Week 3 in a rematch with the Yorkers. Philadelphia continues to play Jekyll and Hyde, falling by five wickets to DC Hawks on Saturday, and then chasing down a strong Cavaliers team, which was fresh off of a 115-run victory over DC Hawks. Philly chased the Cavs 154 runs with 12 balls to spare on Sunday, thanks to another big game from their number three, Chris Patandon, who scored his second half century for the weekend. Gone a long, long way. Ashley Nurse helped lead Houston to three wins as the Hurricanes made short work of the Michigan Cricket Stars, Chicago Blasters, and Chicago Catchers That's gone. Chopped on. to remain the only undefeated team in the Central. Week 3 will feature a rematch of all three contests. Irving Mustangs and St. Louis Americans split their series at McKinney. Jacob S. Panier showed up to the party with 89 from 53 to boost St. Louis in the first game. Nanad Nabalkar and Canada's Rayon Patan powered the Mustangs to the series split in the second game. Austin vs. Chicago Blasters was abandoned due to a wet outfield, but the Athletics managed wins against the catchers and the Michigan Cricket Stars at Musa. At Woodley Park in LA, Golden State Grizzlies earned their place atop the West with wins over SoCal and Hollywood. The SoCal lashings also fell to East Bay, but tops the Silicon Valley Strikers after bowling them out for 119. Hollywood remained without a win in their second game as Silicon Valley defended an anemic 119 for 8, winning a thriller by a single run. San Diego and SoCal head to the Bay Area in Week 3 to battle hosts East Bay Blazers, Silicon Valley Strikers, and Golden State Grizzlies, while Seattle hosts Hollywood Master Blasters at Klahani Park. Joining us now is USA Cricket Captain Saurabh Netravalkar, currently a member of the Silicon Valley Strikers. Saurabh, thank you for joining us today. Thanks, Nate. Thanks for inviting me. Anytime. On Saturday, you guys won a thriller by one run, thanks to some good bowling in the death, particularly in the 18th and 19th overs that gave you a cushion right in the 20th. Tell me what was going through the team's mind as the game got close towards the end. So I think the idea was, obviously, we would have loved to score more runs. But uh, the idea was that the pitch wasn't particularly easy for a new batsman to come in and start hitting straight away. So our goal was to basically take the game as deep as possible. 
So in T20, it's all, all about one or two overs can change the game from here to there. So, and the last over, last two overs can create some kind of a miracle for us. And that was the hope. I think uh, they needed 35 or five overs and they lost only two or three wickets. So they were cruising along, but we were just trying to keep it down, keep it calm, but just take it deep in a hope that if we get one or two b- b- brilliant overs without a boundary and dot balls, and that would just raise the game. And that's what we did. I think a great over by Naeem Young. I think when they needed three overs, 21, he bowled a three run over and then I stepped up and I bowled a three run over and suddenly it was 15 runs in the last over. So I think that's how it's good to have close games in the start of the season where you can actually find strong characters in your team. So in that way, I think it helped us, but I think we are a much better team than the results show. And I think our batting will definitely fire in the, in the upcoming games. So your team is two and one, the strikers, and you're playing this weekend in the Bay Area. You're welcoming the Southern California teams. How do you feel about the strength of the strikers this season? And what's the identity of the strikers at home? I think the identity on paper, if you look at it, we have a very deep batting lineup. It's just about everybody clicking. We have top guys like Narsing, Shehan, who've uh, played quality international uh, cricket. And we have good local talent as well in uh, Rahul, who's our under-19 star, who's who's been consistently scoring runs at local cricket and also in the under-19. So we have some upcoming youth as well. Abhishek Paradkar, another guy who's been a great find, a 20-year-old who could bowl decent and who could bat as well, executed well under pressure for us. So we have a good good balance, I'd say, of experience and youth. And the culture is basically we play for each other. We've had good team bonding activities leading up to the season as well. So kudos to that, to the team owners as well. And uh, we try to stick together, help each other. I think that's the kind of culture we want to build. And how is this playing with players like that you mentioned and playing against the competition that you're playing against? How is that preparing you and other national team members for international cricket? So I think, first of all, it's an exciting time to see a professional domestic, a start of a professional domestic circuit. And the standard of the game through the influx of some quality experience players has also raised high. So we definitely feel this like a preview to what's going to come at the international stage. And most of our games, I think, apart from one weekend, all games that we are playing are on turf. So that's going to also give us a big boost in actually getting used to forming the right habits and the right routines to make sure we are best prepared for international cricket. Yeah, the the West seems to have an awful lot of turf. I think Seattle's the only team that doesn't play on turf. Well, well, thank you for uh, joining us today, Saurabh. Uh, Good luck to the strikers this season and uh, look forward to watching you take more wickets. Yeah, thanks a lot, Nate. Yeah. Thank you. And score more runs as and well. And score more <laughs> runs too, of course. Yeah, maybe maybe bat, you know, maybe bat 7 or 8 now, you know. <laughs> Yeah, I'll see if I can do that. (laughs) (laughs) Sounds good. It's time again for Emerging Cricket's Emerging Player of the Week. And here to join me and name the winner is Aman Patel. Aman, thanks again for taking a break from your studies. Appreciate it. Always a pleasure to be on. All right, let's get right to it. Once again, we had several big performers in the emerging player category. Last week, we named Locksh Park. This week, he was right back at it. He won a Man of the Match award, and he leads the West in wickets with nine and four games. Uh, Who else stood out for you this weekend? Well, I go down to the Atlantic Conference down in the South, where I had the pleasure of calling this game between the Morrisville Cardinals and the Atlanta Fire, where I saw both of the Atlanta Fire youth bowlers bowl stupendously. Uh, you have Akilesh Bogdanagam and also Atindas to Bamanium, both bowled tremendously. Akilesh had four overs with 20 runs and three wickets. He opened the bowling for them. And then Atinda, three over seven runs and two wickets. And in those three overs from Atinda, I saw some exceptional stuff, very consistent using all kinds of variations. I was really impressed by him. Yeah, he, he was excellent. 
Um, you, you know, he's only 16 years old. He bowls extremely well. He's very confident. Uh, his team seems to believe in him and treat him like he's just a regular player. Uh, I think um, good future for him. He's, he's going to occupy that U19 spot for a while. He's only 16, so he'll be there for a while. In in the Pacific, uh, Akashvar Saini Singh and Vasil Vagela, they're not far behind Laksh um, as far as wickets go. They're, they've each got seven wickets. They're striking at a ridiculous rate. They come in, wickets fall. Uh, Joshua Kind, Avishak Parikar, and back over in the Atlantic, Sai Mukamala and Pranav Rao also had big moments this weekend. Yeah, they were truly impressive to go out there and watch. Um, I think everyone just really showed out. I think the youth are just continuing to get better as this tournament progresses. Absolutely. Uh, this week, um, however, there were three who stood out a little bit more to me, um, and they did so with the bat. Uh, Deep Joshi helped take the Cavalier from 84 for seven wickets to a competitive 154 runs against Philadelphia. He scored 40 off of 24, including boundaries on the final two balls of the Cavaliers innings. Oh, my God. He was so impressive to go out there and watch. Uh, watching him bat was just unbelievable. The striking was great. And I think, you know, impressive situation, he really showed up for his team. Yeah, and that was his first innings this season, too. So uh, they, they almost pulled it off, but, uh, but 154 just wasn't enough against that potent Philadelphia uh, batting lineup. Jag Rupa, uh, Reyna, he finally gave Andres House a good opening partner, scoring 56 off of 28 to help the Thunderbolts to a 33-run win in, over the San Diego Surf Riders. He was really impressive. Oh, absolutely he was. I remember watching some of these highlights, and he was hitting the ball so hard and so firmly, showing that you know the, even though they're youth players, they can still come in here and show up with the bat. Right, right. I think the turf, when they finally get that turf up in Seattle, I think that's going to help players like him a lot. He's only 19 years old. He's he's uh, he's got a lot to show already. Uh, Sanjay Krishnamurthy, he top scored for the East Bay Blazers with 55 off of 30, earning him the man of the match against the strong lashings bowling attack. Aman, who's your pick this week? I think we're going to go with Sanjay Krishnamurthy. Uh, again, his innings, like you brought up, 55 off the 30, unbelievable innings from him, and also picked up a couple wickets with the ball. I think in both phases of the game, he really impressed and showed out. And uh, he was a key player for his team again in both phases. So this week, I think the emerging cricket, emerging player of the week is going to be Sanjay Krishnamurti. Good choice. That's a great all round effort from him. It's, it's tough. I think the two wickets put him over the top. Um, so congratulations to Sanjay for, for winning our choice. We'll have a nice little trading card for you. Yeah, I saw that in the first one. It was good. <laughs> so Aman, who's your pick for the next week? I think I'm going to stay in the Atlantic again for another pick, uh, and I'm going to go with Rashish Bahera. He plays three games this weekend for uh, his team, the D.C. Hawks, and he's been getting consistent chances with the balls, and I think up there, you know, again, with those consistent chances, I think it's only a matter of time that he's going to strike. Yeah, yeah. I also went with a player that has three games in the weekend. I think it's kind of the smart way to go. Akashvar Singh Saini, he has three games in the Bay Area. He's an off spinner. He's got a lot of experience there. He played in the U-19 selection camp, and he's really on a roll. Yeah, it's a tremendous pick, too. Yeah, the off-spinner there are going to get plenty of turn and wickets on that ground. Cool. That wraps it up for this week. Uh, thanks for joining me, Amon. I'll see you on Saturday at Church Street Park. Absolutely. It's been a pleasure. Thank you so much. And now it's part of the program where I get to completely indulge myself. Things I really liked about week two. Direct hit run outs. Much better line and length. And he's been given run out. Direct hit run outs from backward point. And I'll take another. Dabbed to point. Chance of a run out again and gone. This is excellent fielding from the Houston Hurricanes. Two emerging players in minor league cricket have sisters playing in the national championships. Sani Vekhela, sister of Golden State's Vassal Vekhela, was third in runs and fourth in wickets. And Sahani Tadani, whose brother is Dev Tadani, of the Strikers, was sixth in wickets. Both of them made it all the way to the national finals, where their West team won the first ever Sistar Mortgage Women's National Championship. And finally, I like the way Corne Dry thinks about his young players. Yeah, so for us, they, they're not players of any age group. They're players that's in the 11. Um, 
we back them 110% and they're doing the job exceptionally well. Um, we give them all the freedom to go play the way they should play and back their skill. They're chosen for a reason and we back them to do that skill. If that needs to be bowled the last over or the first over, we back them to do that and they've done it exceptionally well. The youth in this country is incredible. The amount of talent that's in this country is exceptional. They just need a platform to show it. And that's it for the show this week. I'll once again leave you with minor league cricket's top 10. On the mat once again as we watch inside, that's another wicket. It's a short ball there. Xavier Marshall, what a catch! Ashinur back into the attack, and a wicket! Oh, that's a straight shot. Uh, you know, has um, got into the... Oh, that's a oh, shot. that's a big six. It's coming all the way to the commentary. Watch out! Oh, oh it's, it's hit the board! Only too much on Lettick and repeat this one short in the air. Aman is out there in the deep and takes a stunner. Wow! On the game that he played. That was a tremendous catch. Team reverse sweep and... And down to the leg side, chipped up into the air. And it's gonna be another sharp catch.